If you could order Van Halen off Wish or AliExpress.com, Roxy Blue would show up in their place. They kind of look like Van Halen, they even kind of sound like Van Halen, but sadly, they're not Van Halen and they'll only make you wish that you were listening to Van Halen. What's up guys, my name is Richie Kearns from the channel Richie Kearns Productions, back with another thrilling video about a niche glam metal band that wrote a really weird song about having intercourse with an underage girl. Yeah. Roxy Blue, ladies and gentlemen. Roxy Blue, if you're not familiar, is a hard rock band that formed in Memphis, Tennessee in the late 1980s. The band consisted of vocalist Todd Poole, guitarist Sid Fletcher, bassist Josh Whale and drummer Scott Trammell. Roxy Blue quickly gained a reputation in their local music scene for their high energy performances and catchy hard rockin' songs. In 1992 they signed with Geffen Records and released their debut album, Wantsome. The album art for the debut album, Wantsome, I'm not gonna lie, it's fucking terrible. The logo is shit, the colour scheme is tacky and stood between the logo and the album title stands Uncle Sam groping some young one while he beckons you on with a creepy smile that just says, if there's no grass in the field, let's play ball. The album is asking the listener a very simple question. Do you want some of this? I'm not sure that I do, but for the sake of this documentary, I've no choice but to dive straight in. The album, to be fair, is actually pretty good, but again, you can't help but feel like you're listening to a band that's trying so hard to be Van Halen. Everything from the lead singer's mannerisms to the rot style jump kicks in the video and the Eddie eruption like guitar riffage on some of the tracks does make you wonder if they doubled as a tribute act. The album is 12 tracks long and in all honesty really does have some good songs. My favourites are Too Hot To Handle, Sister Sister and Love's Got A Hold Of Me. It even has a kick-ass cover of Squeezebox by The Who. So it's safe to say there was a lot of good tracks to use for a debut single, but just like a lot of rock bands of the time, they wrote one of those really weird creepy songs and it's this one titled Rob The Cradle. The term robbing the cradle refers to having a romantic or sexual relationship with someone who is significantly younger than oneself, usually to the extent that is socially or even legally inappropriate. Now just have a guess which one they chose to be their debut single. Yeah. Mother of Jesus. Now I know what you must be thinking. It's just tongue in cheek, right? But how can it be? It's called Rob the Cradle. But maybe the lyrics aren't that bad, right? God, what were they thinking? These lyrics have aged like milk. What's the lead singer's name again? Todd Poole. More like Peter File. Jesus. Can you just imagine trying to release a song like this smack bang in the current era of politically correct, gender bending wokeness? If they released this song today, I guarantee you they would be famous for all the wrong reasons and dragged endlessly. And I'm actually surprised no one's talked about it before now. But back when it was actually released, it did pretty okay, shockingly enough, but not well enough to propel them into Bon Jovi levels of fame. Now who knows why they wrote this song? Maybe they didn't even want to write it. Maybe they didn't even write it. For all we know, it could have been pressures from the label. After all, that's why Jane Lee Lane wrote Cherry Pie. So, that night I wrote Cherry Pie, and all of a sudden, the album's called Cherry Pie, the record's called Cherry Pie, I'm doing Cherry Pie eating contests, I could shoot myself in the head for writing that song. They probably just needed to have a mandatory lusting after a teenage girl type song. But through the lens of my older self, it gives off more of a sweaty priest in a playground rubbing his knees type vibe. But do you want to know the worst thing about this song? Like, the really bad thing about it? Musically, it kicks ass. It's really good and it's catchy. It's like a virus. The lyrics get stuck in your head. And then next thing you know, you find yourself walking down the street, singing it, while people are looking at you, and you're wondering why they're looking at you like you've two heads. Their ballad release, however, is another story. It's lyrically strong, and the music is solid. To my knowledge, there were three music videos made for the songs off this album. Roxy Blue were a one and done band after this album, and honestly, it's clear to see why. Personally, I feel like they would have stood a better chance at making it, had they have picked a better song for their debut and locked that other one away in a vault somewhere. Also, if they put more effort into their album art, this would have gone a long way too. I mean, after all, this was their debut album. Was anyone truly happy with the final result? Like, really? Did they have a say in 
anything they done. After what I learned about labels back then, who knows. Wansom with that packaging I feel would have done very well if it came out in 1987, but this came out in 1992 and by then music, popular culture and people's sensibilities had changed. This album in my opinion is the personification of an old lad walking around a teenage disco with a mirror on the end of his cane, pinching the arses of the girls that run by nervously. But because it's so shocking we all sort of laugh instead of do anything about it. This album, even back then, taunted the guillotine of what should have been acceptable. And I think for all of those reasons, it's why Roxy Blue ended up being a commercial failure and disbanding. However, Roxy Blue eventually would reform in 2013 and put out another album called Want Some More, and another album after that. And perhaps I'll check them out down the line, but for now, I think I've had enough. Roxy Blue are still an active band today, and I'm sure, I hope their music has gotten better. So if you want an alternative to Van Halen and you're looking for a laugh, you could do a lot worse than Roxy Blue. Whenever it shows up at a car boot sale or cheap on Discogs, maybe pick it up and give it a listen. This has been Roxy Blue and the song Nobody Talks About by Richie Kearns Productions. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.